Hey everyone, welcome back to the Ohio State University Sport Management YouTube channel. I'm Mitch and today we're joined by a panel from the Ohio High School Athletic Association. With us we have Emily Gates, Tyler Brooks, and Ron Sayers. So welcome everyone and thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us, Mitch. Yeah, of course. So first, can you all just give us a description of your career journey so far? And you know, you all have different roles within the OHSAA. So could you please explain the role that you take on and your core responsibilities? Um, Ron, if it's all right, can we start with you? Sure, sure. Uh, so I am actually coming up on my one year anniversary with the association. I started July 8th of 2019. Um, and that was actually uh, after a brief stint as an intern as well with um, compliance. But right now I'm the assistant director of membership services. Uh, my core role really is just working with the schools and um, making sure that they are um, following our uh, constitution articles as well as um, some bylaws and some sport regulations depending on the situation. Um, we also do a lot of the technology and educational pieces for our schools, so dealing with um, our internal software MyOSHA, our external software in Arbiter, um, making sure they're all in line with that. And then on top of that, I've just kind of gathered random responsibilities throughout. So I helped with ice hockey this past year. Um, right now we have a gap in compliance, so I'm going to shift over and, and help them throughout the summer until we uh, kind of figure out where we're going with that. So really, my job description is anything that they throw at me. <laughs> I think that's kind of the, the case for most of us at the association. So that's awesome. Tyler, you want to go next? Sure. Um, I've been with the OHSAA since uh, March of 2014, so just over six years now, which is kind of crazy. Um, prior to my time at the OHSAA, uh, I was an undergrad at Ohio State, uh, Sport and Leisure uh, Studies, uh, and then the um, graduate program, a Master's for Sport Management. Um, some of my past work experiences was really wide-ranging in sports from kind of recreational sport facility management to facility operations at the shot, to interning with the Clippers, to community recreation um, with youth sport camps. Um, kind of a little bit of everything under the sun, um, which has been helpful and kind of guided me along my career path to find out what I like and maybe more importantly, what you don't like. Um, so um, in my duties at the OHSAA, I work primarily in the officiating department. Um, I'll circle back on that, but um, aside from my duties in the officiating department, I am the administrator for the sport of wrestling. Uh, so I oversee all of the regulations and everything through the state tournament with that sport. Uh, within the officiating department, um, unless you're an official or a high school official, um, a lot of these terms probably don't make a lot of sense because they didn't make any sense to me before I started working there. But uh, we have between 14 to 15,000 officials across the state of Ohio in 14 different sports. Um, all of them belong to approximately 310 local officials associations where they receive uh, can kind of continuing education each year uh, that they certify or renew as an official. Um, so I'm the point of contact for all of those local associations. There's kind of a head official of each sport that we call our directors of officiating development. I'm also the coordinator for them. And then uh, many times schools will hire assigners, uh, which are just individuals, usually current or former officials that actually select officials for the contest, kind of take that burden off the athletic directors and um, apply some expertise in that area. So I also coordinate that group as well. So um, the Jane department has a lot of entities and tentacles, but um, it, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a mystery until you're totally immersed in it, which it, it's easy to do. So I've enjoyed my time a lot so far, and it, it does continue to evolve each year. And Ron's finding that out too. That's great. Emily? Yeah, so like Mitch said, my name's Emily Gates, and my title at the OHSAA is Director of Sport Management. So I am the sport administrator for baseball, volleyball, and field hockey. So um, if you're not familiar with the OHSAA, um, kind of a way to think about our organization to simplify it is we're essentially the NCAA of high school sports in the state of Ohio. So um, as Ron mentioned in compliance and Tyler mentioned in officiating, we have different departments. And so 
We also have many regulations, rules, bylaws, et cetera, um, that our member schools have to follow. So as a sport administrator, uh, my main role is to work with coaches and athletic directors to educate them on our rules and regulations. Um, we use the National Federation of High School Sports Playing Rules. So making sure our coaches and athletic administrators are educated on those as well. Um, and then one of our biggest pieces is also, um, you know, we kind of monitor during the season, applying our rules and regulations in and out of the season. And then one of our biggest roles as sport administrators is conducting the regional and state tournaments. So um, we work with six district athletic boards across the state to conduct the first two rounds of the tournament series, which are sectionals and districts. And then our office is responsible for the regional and state level tournaments. So that's working with Tyler in the officiating department, making sure officials are assigned to those games, finding um, sites and tournament managers to host at the regional level and then working with the state tournament venue to schedule and host all of the games for the sports I administrate. A um, little bit of background on me. I, like Tyler, am starting my sixth year here. Uh, my very first week of work was the state baseball tournament and I'm still working with baseball so that's pretty neat. Not a bad way to start. Um, but I'm from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So I went to, um, my undergraduate was at University of Arkansas where I studied uh, recreation and sport management and got my minor in business. And then like the others joined the sport management uh, master's program at OSU. And then um, kind of like Tyler, I did a lot of different things. Um, a lot of event management, working with football and basketball. I worked with sponsorship. I worked with ticketing. I worked in development, that type of thing. And I've always repeated kind of what Tyler said about a lot of it is the benefit of, you know, the opportunity to do so many internships in the sport management world is finding out what you like and what you don't like. Um, it's different for everyone, but it's just great experience to have. And then my second year of my master's program, I was the graduate assistant. Um, I was the first facility manager GA at the RPAC on campus. So um, the OHSAA and rec sports have a pretty big tie just from past employees and um, their work at our state tournaments. So um, both Tyler and I were kind of on the same path, which was pretty neat to be in the same program together and then start at the OHSAA together. That's great. That's awesome. So Emily, we'll start with you on this one. Um, what do you enjoy most about working with the OHSAA? So um, I'll be pretty honest. I was never really interested in high school sports. Um, when the opportunity came about, I was, you know, kind of like a lot of you guys right now looking to find a job, that type of thing. So I thought an interview could never hurt. And I tell people all the time, I actually felt like I was skipping out of my interview because what I loved about and continue to love about our association is um, what a lot of people don't know is we're actually our own nonprofit entity. A lot of people think that we are kind of like a government um, state run association or there's like a nationwide um, kind of governing body over us, but all of the state associations and all states are their own entities. Um, so what I love about that is it gives us the ability to be really creative. Um, I noticed just in working with different teams and that type of thing, you know, just because of rules set in place, you're kind of limited to what you can do. And what I loved about the OHSAA is I was bringing all, every part of every internship I had into one place. So, you know, I had the event management, I had the sponsorship, the development, working with finance and budgets, that type of thing, and facility management. So I saw it as an opportunity to really use all of those elements into one place. 
Um, and because we are our own entity, if you will, um, we just have a board of directors and then it's our internal office. So we really do have the opportunity to get creative if we want to make a change to our tournament structure or if there's an event we want to create or a promotional element we want to create. We really have that ability. Um, and you just have such a, we have about, we have over 800 high schools in the state, even more junior highs. So you're really getting a diverse group of people you're working with, which is another great opportunity. So that's the thing I love most about working at the OHSAA. Right. And like you said, it's not just high school, it's the middle school level as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Ron, how about you? So for me, coming out of high school and college, I wanted to do the athletic director thing and, and work with kids um, at the high school level, at the junior high level. And I, I wanted to stray away from um, college athletics, professional athletics, because it's much more of, of a business. And while we are a business, um, we're different in, in a sense that uh, there's, there's our, our main drive, I should say, isn't isn't money. Our main drive is the experience and enriching interscholastic athletics for those students. And one of the one of the greatest things is really seeing that end product, um, especially that state tournament time. So when I was an intern with compliance uh, way back in 17, 18 school year, I helped with the soft Ball state tournaments up in Akron and I believe it was the last day uh, we had um, a couple of state championship games going on and me and one of our colleagues had got there at 7 30 a.m. the game wasn't set to go until 9 a.m. but there was a line of about 350 people from West Branch High School which is all the way in the northeast so not terribly far from Akron but to see 350 people just standing there waiting to get in to support their local high school athletic team was just almost emotionally overwhelming. It's just really cool to see communities come together for this purpose and to, to kind of strive for one goal and to be able to be the driving force in that in our association is just something that I think is uh, extremely special and something that you don't get really anywhere else. Yep. Yeah, and I noticed that just from like the state football this year, the small schools had, bigger turnouts than you know your large d1s which is really cool to see so tyler 100 percent um i i kind of get to view my favorite things through my two different where as a sport administrator and then also my roles in the officiating department um as a as a staff member of the officiating department i think my favorite part is uh the the volume and the the variety of people i get to work with in a given day as i mentioned we have 14,000 officials. Um, so on a given day, I could talk with uh, a young first year official, 20 year old taking a class in college to a 70 year old, 50 year uh, veteran of officiating uh, and, they, and trying to help them and uh, guide them as best as we can, um, helping schools with any issues that they may arise, helping the associations, helping um, just really connect um, all the pieces of the officiating community that, um, can be challenging and can be overwhelming uh, for, for an individual. So um, I love the friendships and contacts that I've made across the state with people uh, that I never would have otherwise met. Um, and from a sport management side, uh, I think all of us are former um, high school student athletes. And it's not often that we get ourselves mentally to this level where we zoom out and remember how much joy we took in that. And then to have now have a professional role in providing those opportunities is is beyond rewarding. Um, I try to get to some regular season events, and you get to, when you get to your tournament events, it's just another level, and uh, it's it's so immensely satisfying to see the the long days and even the the hard times and the hard emails and the hard phone conversations you have to have with coaches or um, heaven forbid parents sometimes um, that we are contributing to a lifetime of memories and a, a positive um, influence in these kids' lives. So um, it's not always easy to get up to that level mentally on a daily uh, or even weekly occurrence, but um, whenever we get to see these kids participating and making those memories, uh, it makes it all worth it.
That's great. So now I'll get on to kind of the COVID side of things. So, you know, it drastically affected the sports world and especially the high school sports world. So the OHSA winter sports state tournaments were canceled literally the day before. And then, you know, spring sports were just getting started um, and were canceled as well. So can you talk about the challenges that you all faced when COVID took over? Um, Tyler or Ron, I'd like to start with you first, just because, you know, Ron, you had hockey and then Tyler, you were overseeing um, wrestling, which we're getting ready to start. Um, yeah, I can start it. Um, so the the plug kind of got pulled on that Thursday of that week. I just call it that week. I can't even remember the dates. I think it was probably March 12th, uh, Thursday the 12th. So that was actually the day that the girls state basketball tournament was set to begin. Um, traditionally, my state wrestling tournament would also have started that Thursday through that Saturday. But this year, we were going to try a different format of a Friday through Sunday. And um, the Wednesday before the day, really, I can't say is the day the world changed, at least for our organization. Mm -hmm. um, some questions started popping up the afternoon of what I think was Wednesday the 11th. Um, I got a, a random email from a school superintendent to say, one of the wrestlers that qualified for state wrestling was at an event. Someone at that event is now exhibiting symptoms. I mean, this came through at like six o'clock and we start asking yourself questions. You know, what is our responsibility to provide a safe environment? Am I going to turn around and tell this kid you can't participate and we have no, there's no tests back then. You couldn't readily get one. And so about the time I got that email late Wednesday evening through all the preparations on Thursday morning uh, for the tournament, I, I had a bad sinking feeling that grew with each passing hour. That this just was not going to happen. Uh, we had finished our, our final preparations for the tournament that Thursday morning. We call it packet stuffing day. We have, you know, 300 schools participating and 600 plus uh, participants. So there's that last day, kind of ritualistic preparation for the tournament. And I was just kind of disconnecting with all the staff helping me and just thinking, this is probably not going to happen. And it was so strange. And, as the days went by and the, the kind of tournament prep room is where all the medals and trophies and packets were just sitting. And, um, you know, they were indefinitely postponed for a time, but we always knew that wrestling would be a huge challenge given the number of competitors, the nature of the sport, all of that, the facility requirements. And um, it went from kind of a shock um, to sadness, but uh, they say, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. And, in that week when we first got governor orders on reducing uh, spectator capacity to ultimately the, the plug getting pulled on that Thursday about noon, um, we had accomplished a lot that the world will probably never know, but will probably help us in future years um, implement some things for at least my tournament. And um, it, it, it was a crazy time. I, I hope it's the craziest time we will ever have to work through, or at least I will have to work through in my professional career and I'm only six, seven years into it. Um, and we're still working through it and we will be for a long time. But again, I hope whatever we work through that our organization will come out better for it on the other end. Yeah, it's just, just like Tyler said, I mean, everything that from the time that DeWine had set forth the specific orders um, about reducing staff or reducing staff, reducing um, those in attendance, um, really just kind of getting down to the bare bones of what's needed um, to when it got canceled was it was just a whirlwind of of things. I mean, we had a couple of days there where we were 730 in the morning until 1230 uh, the next morning. So we were we were moving through and, and, and trying to get things things accomplished. And uh, we were with hockey put into a interesting situation just because we were trying to scale back uh, a lot of the attendance and it was just going to be parents and had to make a lot of adjustments with tickets and selling those. But then the venue that we uh, compete at nationwide arena also had the blue jackets. And for, for a hot second there, the blue jackets were going to allow um, full capacity and they were refusing to follow the governor's uh, recommendations is what they were at that point. So we were put in a really strange situation and in, in trying to uh, just rationalize why we're cutting back and we're going with that. Luckily, a couple of days later, the uh, the recommendations were set forth to orders, and we were able to kind of um, move forward without a lot of those questions. 
Um, but whenever we got it, or the day we got it canceled, I remember being in the office, I was helping Tyler stuff, stuff packets and like, we went through uh, hundreds of those things. And it was, uh, it was, it was wild. And then Jerry Snodgrass, our executive director came out of the office. He was on the phone and we all kind of just got up and uh, we, me and him specifically drove from the office down to St. John Arena doing about 80 on 315 and weaving in and out. <laughs> and we get to St. John Arena and there are girls on the court. They're warming up. They're getting ready for their uh, state semifinal game. And uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of you didn't see St. John Arena. You probably weren't allowed to for obvious reasons, but St. John Arena was set up so beautifully and it was so, so hard to watch those student athletes get pulled off of the court they were they were literally warming up but but to see them get pulled off of the court and then be told that it's going to be postponed is uh it, it was something that i never wanted to go through but but to, to go through it was something that i think we're we're all learning from and we know um, what we need to do in these situations and like tyler said we're we're going to come out of this uh, a lot stronger uh, i think we are a lot stronger already we're ex much more efficient already in working uh from home and, and kind of changing our processes we've i, th I think we've <laughs> communicated more throughout this uh what's it, three month period than we did in uh in the three months prior to that there were i uh, i say this um Kind of regretfully, but there were there were weeks where I didn't see Emily or Tyler at all. But now we talk on a weekly, if not a daily basis. So it's um, there's things we've learned from and and things that we're going to continue to do as we come out of this. And it's uh, it's been eye opening and enlightening in so many ways. Yeah, thank you guys. What about you, Emily, with baseball? Yeah, so it's kind of funny to like kind of what Tyler was saying about, you know, it's just like a wild time. I even forgot. It's been, it's almost such a blur because it's just been so crazy. I even forgot that there was a time that that was so hard about those winter tournaments. And I'm not a winter sport administrator, but they were dealing with entities that are saying, we're going to allow spectators. And now we're in a situation where we're like, what now we're talking about bringing back spectators so it's just wild how much it's evolved so um, since I administrate the spring sport of baseball um, what we were dealing with prior to the season so um, just to give a brief timeline as Tyler mentioned that week it was uh, mid-March and then spring sports were set to have their first contest on March 28th so um, there were a few schools that may have gotten in a few scrimmages, but probably only one, if any. Um, so from there, that's when the governor, um, can't, he shut down schools. So then we were dealing with in spring sports, well, schools aren't in session. So what are the student athletes and the programs going to be doing? So since schools are shut down, that means that we needed, or you know, the order was to shut down school facilities as well. So obviously we were kind of dealing with something that was different than those winter sports. We were dealing with, well, now the order is, there should not be groups of any size really participating together. Um, at the time from the beginning or kind of at the end of March when that decision was made to shut down the schools. Um, we instituted what we call referred to as a no contact period. So that was just us kind of in cooperation with the governor's orders saying, just reminding them that there should be no school um, or group activity taking place of any kind. So at that point, there was a better idea of returning. Um, the idea was to return back to school in very early May. So we also, just from that time at, in mid-March to still today, everything was evolved. I mean, there was a time period where things were changing daily, if not hourly. And, you know, from our office, we were just having to be able to respond to that. Um, it has helped just the efficiency of our response, that kind of thing. Um, so as spring sport administrators, since we had a thought of return, um, and if you guys remember, 
at the same time, we were also dealing with the NCAA canceled the entire spring sports season, and we had not done anything of the type. So naturally, um, anytime anything happens at any other level, people's questions come to us, well, are you going to cancel? So at the time, we were not expecting to cancel, um, but we were very clear um, that if school schools were to be remain closed for the remainder of the school year, then spring sports would be canceled. So at this time, spring sports hadn't been canceled yet. So um, the spring sport administrators had to make abbreviated sports seasons. So um, we were given a date. Um, I think the estimated date was about May. It was in. It was through like May fifth or around that date. So spring sport administrators, we were like, okay, we'll give them an acclimation period of a week to, because especially in the sport of baseball, you don't want to jump right into activity due to arm health, that type of thing. Um, so we gave them a week long acclimation period. So we were saying that contests for spring sports could begin on May 9th. So from there, we had to have dis internal discussions and discussions with um, our district athletic boards who host the tournaments as well as our state tournament venues of, okay, so if we're going to have an abbreviated season, how long are we going to have our school seasons occur? Um, without going into too much detail, just because, you know, student athletes have so many activities in the summer, um, we didn't want it to go any further than um, the end of June. So spring sport administrators worked with their tournament venues and really kind of how it worked was working with them. Um, for example, we host um, our state baseball tournament the last two years at Canal Park in Akron, which is the home of the minor league baseball team for the Rubber Ducks. So they had a schedule of their own. So obviously they only have so much availability. So we all worked with our different venues and kind of went backwards from there. Um, this week, um, two years ago, we extended the baseball season one week and just kind of how the calendar lined up this year. Actually for 2020, the original state baseball tournament date was as late as it's ever been. Um, so it actually didn't change too much. It only would have been a week later. So it actually would have been this weekend would have been the abbreviated state baseball tournament date. Um, so we had to just, there were a lot of internal discussions about, you know, how does that affect the regular season? And then, you know, with spring sports, you're dealing with things like rainouts. Well, if these you know, if we only allow so many weeks and they have only five games in due to rain, you know, is, is that a good thing to jump right into the tournament or not? So it's, there's just all these outside things you have to think about. So all spring sport administrators created abbreviated sports seasons. And then it came down to the governor did cancel in-person school for the remainder of the school year. So in turn, we did end up canceling the spring sports seasons as well. But um, like I was saying with that, um, the NCAA canceling their spring sports so early on, that caused a lot of panic um, just because, you know, thinking about getting your last high school athletic seasons and that type of thing. Um, we do know that even though we had to in the end cancel our spring sports, um, a lot of coaches and student athletes were appreciative of the fact that we were trying to still have the spring sports seasons if we could, but just not having school, um, it just doesn't make sense. Right. And then Ohio was one of the last like states to really kind of hold off on sports, right? Like we're waiting till the last minute. Yeah, a lot of our neighboring states had already canceled their spring sports. And so, you know, I think you hate to say that helped us in a way, but we were very willing to have an abbreviated season doing kind of that short term work. Um, and I think that's been kind of the item through this whole thing that we hope, you know, our member schools 
see is that we are trying to make those interscholastic athletic events happen. Um, and we're willing to do that kind of last minute work to make those opportunities happen for our students and schools. That's awesome. That's great. So switching topics a little bit. So Tyler, we'll start with you on this one. So why did you choose Ohio State for your master's program? Hmm. This might not be the most inspirational response, but I'll tell you the truth. Um, when I decided that that was the route I wanted to go, um, that I wanted to return to grad school uh, in pursuit of a, a master's in sport management, I only had enough time to take one standardized test. And if I recall back when, um, OSU accepted the GRE, and I believe the other one I was considering was Ohio University, and that required the GMAT, as they, I think they tie in an, an MBA with their program. Um, so a state was my only, um, was my primary choice, and I only had time for one uh, standardized uh, exam. I prepped for the GRE, got what I needed apparently. And um, I think the familiarity with the, obviously the school, but also the uh, staff. I'd had Dr. Turner uh, in an undergrad class and enjoyed it, enjoyed it and um, had kept in touch with him, I think from uh, you know, one of those internship experiences where they check in on you in the summer. So I had built like a small relationship with Dr. Turner uh, I don't believe I'd had Dr. Pastore in undergrad, but uh, I knew of her because I had had some friends that had gone through the sport management program. So my familiarity with the program, and then uh, I think the track record and this, the setting of Columbus and then the Ohio State Athletic Department and all the opportunities that provides, there wasn't a lot of competition in the state uh, to stack up against that. Um, the OU, Ohio University program uh, was compelling as they tied in that MBA. Um, but you just got to stack up where your priorities are. You know, what, what experiences are you going to be able to get um, being a full-time student in Athens versus uh, being in Columbus and opportunities with the, the athletics department. So, um, you know, not one program is for everybody, um, but, you know, Ohio State stands on its own. Ron, what about you? So I, I came out of college and pursue my uh, – master's degree um, right off the, the bat there. Um, so I applied to a number of schools. I got into Ohio State, uh, luckily, and I got into the University of Seattle and then the University of Gonzaga. And at that point, I sat down and looked, what are the best options and what opportunities each was able to see the Ohio State obviously um, greatest uh, these with for sports that they have sports. really it you don't really hear about Gonzaga anything else frankly so um, I was able to see that uh, going to Ohio State uh, and being a part of uh, event management as well as um, being able to be down here and, and, and work with the OHSA uh, as well as an opportunity so um, that really helped. Uh, and then my brother also went to Ohio Dominican University. So it was nice to get back down here and, and be close to him and make sure that I can uh, attend all of his uh, football games uh, during his, his final season. So uh, that was a big part of it. Also, Seattle is 37 hours away by car. Uh, fun fact. Um, so my mom would not have been thrilled had I went 37 hours away. So that was um, probably the fourth biggest factor <laughs> of it all. So that's great. What about you, Emily? Uh, so, like I was saying in my undergrad degree at the University of Arkansas, it was recreation and sport management. So, it was very heavily uh, recreation focused. And so, there was a professor named Dr. Dittmore who um, was very focused on the sport management side. So, we were a, there was kind of a core group of us that worked with him a lot as our advisor. Um, we created the sport management club, that type of thing, and we were also able to travel for some uh, re sport research conferences. So um, he um, basically, I was kind of getting towards the end of my senior year, and he, I just started talking to him about grad school, and since he was very you know, heavily involved in the academic side, he actually gave me a list of five schools 
um, kind of like Tyler, not overly inspirational, but being from Arkansas, I had actually grown up there. Um, I was pretty ready to um, try something new and I was really willing to move anywhere. So um, he gave me a list of five schools all out of state. And mine was kind of funny now that I'm here. Um, one of them was OSU and one as well was OU at Ohio University. And from where I am from, OU is uh, Oklahoma University. And it was funny because being from Arkansas, no one really heard of Ohio University. And so I was like, had no interest in applying there. Um, and so the others were UNC, uh, Chapel Hill, um, South Carolina, and Louisville. So um, actually Ohio State had the very first application deadline. And then um, in the conferences I had been able to attend, I actually met Dr. Turner um, one year because Dr. Dittmore and Dr. Turner are good friends. So um, it was kind of nice to already have a connection with him. But again, um, they had the first application deadline. And so I ended up only applying to Ohio State just because I got in and I was like, you know, that's a great opportunity. Um, you're in a big city, you have so many sports at hand. Um, so it was, a, it was my parents remind me that I just kind of walked in one day and was like, I'm moving to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> they were like, okay. So that's how I ended up here. And to be honest, I didn't think I'd stay. I didn't think I'd go back to Arkansas necessarily, but still here. <laughs> Last question, um, Tyler. This is this is for you, and you can't say Chipotle. Well, also you, Emily. But so, what is your favorite restaurant in Columbus? One. I could do one of each food type. Um, I'll say my favorite right now. Working in Clintonville, there's been a little explosion of restaurants by our office. Um, and uh, maybe it's just because I'm craving it today, but I'm gonna go with Hot Chicken Takeover. Um, there's one right there by our office in Clintonville, and uh, I've got my out of town buddies hooked on it. So when I have friends coming in for Buckeye football weekends, you can pretty much pencil in uh, one of those three meals is going to be Hot Chicken Takeover. So um, too many to list, but I'll say that one because I'm hungry for it right now. Emily, what about you? Uh, mine is the Pearl. Um, it's a Cameron Mitchell restaurant and I suppose it's a little bit of my roots as well because it's kind of like a little fancier southern food but they have cornbread and I love cornbread. Um, they have it's just got great food every time I've been there. I've, I've tried something different every time and I've loved it all. Um, and I'm pretty big on kind of the atmosphere of a restaurant. Um, it's just got great aesthetics, that type of thing, great food. Um, people are always friendly. It's just got, they do it very well there. Um, so that's my favorite. <laughs> Ron, the question is, what is your favorite restaurant in Columbus? I told Tyler Ooh, you couldn't do a... Chipotle. So Tyler, pick yeah, it up. Take and take over. All right. Um, whew, tough one. Um, I don't go to a lot of restaurants, honest to God. Um, probably Brio in Easton. That's a really good one. Um, but that's a uh, every couple of months one because it's it is pricey. And I'll tell you what, I, I do not make the salary needed to eat there on a regular basis. Um, but they have a really good uh, mushroom ravioli. And that's that's really what I go for every single time. I am not a man <laughs> of variety. I can tell you that. Actually, one more question, if you guys don't mind. So with COVID, have you guys picked up any skills or what has been your hobbies during during this time? I'd say I've, I've rekindled uh, some of my favorite hobbies. I'm probably uh, running as regularly as I have maybe in many years, uh, finding a little extra time to play guitar. And then also I've, I've dusted off the old Xbox 360 and I've been catching up on many years of my dynasty on NCAA 2013. So I've, I've built a formidable football powerhouse in Vanderbilt, um, but uh, I'm ready to get back to whatever real life is going to be moving forward. But yeah, kind of just revisited some, some old friends of mine. Emily? 
Um, well, kind of the same with Tyler. Um, definitely picking up running a bit more. Um, the workout, uh, I go to a place called Burn Boot Camp and they've been doing online videos. So I've been able to continue doing that, but I've been picking up golf, which is obviously as those who play golf know, it's not the easiest sport to pick up without any lessons or anything like that. Um, but I've been trying to play as much as possible. Um, and this is gonna make me sound old and boring, but I've been picking up gardening and landscaping and house projects, and it's actually really satisfying. <laughs> but it makes me feel like an adult now, I suppose. <laughs> So, so for me, I've uh, rekindled uh, my love for golf over the past couple of years. Haven't been able to go as much as I, I want to, but going um, weekly, if not uh, twice a week at this point. So that's that's been fun. Um, I've also really honed in my uh, war zone strategy for Call of Duty, um, Modern Warfare. So picked up quite a few dubs over the past uh, few months, which is fantastic. Um, I mean, other than that, like Emily, I've actually planted several plants, which is great. Um, they are sitting on my tiny patio and, um, I'm cooking, uh, more than, more than I usually did when I was, when we were back in the office on a regular basis. So, uh, that's been nice. Um, but, but like Tyler, I, I really just cannot wait to get back into like a, a normal work routine because, uh, being in this apartment, God, 24 hours a day at some point is is just exhausting and I cannot stand it. I also miss all my friends. So it's uh it, it'll be nice to be back. What about you, Mitch? What have I been doing? Yeah. I recently, I guess not recently, I've had a got a little golden retriever puppy for he's it's about five and a half months old. So I've had him for about three months now. And then like Tyler, I've tried to, you know, get back out on the on the sidewalk and run a little bit. So not much. I'm doing my best, applying for some jobs and it's great to see you all again. And we really appreciate your time and insight. So thanks everyone else for, for tuning in to the Ohio State Sport Management YouTube channel and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks, Mitch.